What is up everyone, today we'll be trying out XL Malamar in the Open Ultra League. One of my favorite Pokemon actually just based on its unique design, typing and moveset, which gives it some very interesting coverage uh, in the Ultra League. But it's just never really been that great, to be honest. However, I think in the current meta, it has a lot of play. It can take out Pokemon like Trevenant, Walrein, also other ghost types like Giratina and Jellicent. It does very well against and besides that it has a lot of play versus Steel types and Pokemon like Scrafty because of super power. So yeah, it definitely has some good targets. The main thing holding it back though I feel is its typing. It's a very unique typing with Dark and Psychic which on the one hand is really nice because it only has two weaknesses in uh, Fairy and Bug which I'm covering for generously in the back with two of the best uh, covers for it, the Talonflame and Nidoqueen. Uh, and the dark psychic typing also makes it incredibly unique because it makes Malamar a psychic type, which can beat ghost types, which is really, really unique. However, the typing also gives it zero resistances. There's not a single typing in the game where Malamar takes resisted damage, which even though Malamar ha has like pretty good stats, it makes Malamar feel quite squishy uh, at times because you're just gonna take, get taken out by neutral moves all day. Besides that, it's kind of an iffy Pokemon because even though you generally like beat uh, ghost types, if they get like an energy lead or shield lead, they can usually take you out because again, you, do, you don't resist their moves. So neutral shadow balls are still gonna do a lot of damage. Uh, it was still able to do a lot of work though because that, that stuff also works the other way around give Malamar a shield and energy lead, and it does quite well as well. This game is actually going to finish off this Talon Flame here with a foul play add stored off up, and that is a GG. Next, we ma next match, we get a pretty good lead with Malamar into Giratina. The Shadow Claws, as you can see, are really adding up though already. The Dragon Claw will do a good chunk as well, but Malamar pretty tanky. will definitely be able to take it, uh, and those foul plays are going to start, start adding up in a second. We're going to throw one uh, right now, because Sayu Cut get there so fast, it's only four, uh, five Sayu Cuts per foul play, and it's only nine Sayu Cuts for two superpowers actually. So this thing is really, really spammy, which is quite nice. Gonna throw another foul play right here. But my opponent makes an amazing catch into the S Cavalier. Kind of made a mistake here. I could have seen the catch coming and not throwing my move, but I threw it in the, into the S Cavalier. So kind of uh, farm up to another foul play. Come in my Talon Flame and farm this thing down. Honestly, I probably also should have undercharged. Uh, that foul play to get more farm on my talent flame this is still fine i get three incinerates instead of four uh, we're still pretty good in comes empoleon now which is not great for talent flame but since i'm already a shield up and i have a lot of energy here i will likely be able to get off two flame chargers here which i think will warrant a shield from this empoleon now empoleon steel type of course so i can probably take this out with malamar later with the suit power Polion actually kind of a problem for this team because both Nidoqueen and Talonflame do lose and Malamar doesn't have the best matchup, but you can see Superpower does take it out and I have Nidoqueen versus uh, Giratina. This is not a great matchup, but I am two shields up. So this this point, I should be fine. It's going to take these first Dragon Claws. I could I could just shield them, to be honest, but uh, one I can definitely take, but the, the, the ones after this, I'm definitely going to shoot. I know one Earth Power doesn't KO. Actually, I have Earthquake on my Needle Queen. Yeah, I think I, I'd like my first couple games, I actually I accidentally ran Earthquake uh, instead of Earth Power. You definitely want Earth Power on this thing, not Earthquake. So uh, yeah, I TM'd it later. Here comes another Dragon Claw, and I'm just going to go for the Quake right here and at this say Game over. Maybe the Earthquake would have KO'd from that range, actually. Maybe I didn't have to Super Power, or I mean Poison Fang. Uh, but uh, yeah, since I thought I had Earth Power, Poison Fang was just the way to go. Swampert is actually kind of problematic for this team because both Talonflame and Nidoqueen do lose to it. And Malamar also doesn't have the best matchup because two, two of these uh, Hydros almost knocked me out. And two of these Foul Plays won't be doing enough to the Swampert as you're gonna see. Already took one uh, Hydro in the yellow already. And this Foul Play doesn't take the Swampert into the yellow, unfortunately. Besides that... Uh, I'm not getting any of my Psycho th cuts through during their charge move, and I did get a Mutual through during my charge move. Actually, I did, did get a Mutual through during both my charges now, which means I'm actually two moves behind uh, what I should be, so that kind of sucks. I don't want them to farm me, farm me down all the way, so I'm just going to bring in Nidoqueen, start poison 
uh, jabbing this down. In comes the Giratina, and this is not looking too good thus far. If two Talon Fame answers. The reason I did feel kind of safe running this team, even though Swampert is kind of common, is because Talonflame still has a lot of flavor to Swampert. And most Swampert teams are pretty weak to Talonflame. Like, uh, whatever they run with Swampert. Usually, like, I don't know, an Escarver Trev, a Walrein. Usually pretty weak to, to Talon. But in this case, uh, we actually see a Giratina. So that is not too nice for Talon. Already two Talon answers, though. So maybe... Uh, the third will be weak. That'd be quite nice. I'm just bring my talent right here into the Giratina. No need to shield this Giratina. Incredibly tanky. Low attack. These jungles won't be doing too much. I bring in Swampert. I can actually farm it down because I call an incinerate on it. In comes the Giratina again. I lag a little bit, which um, means I won't be able to get off my flame charge before I get off this move. It's really unfortunate. I'm gonna throw it here. And my opponent is gonna end up shielding this, which is. Interesting. That might mean they have something weak to Talonflame in the back. Just gonna throw another flame charge right right away. Don't wanna get hit by another drink claw. And they shield it again. They shield it again. I'm gonna shield up their move. That would die. Gonna farm down this Giratina. What is in the back? I don't know. <laughs> they conceded the match. It must have been an S Cavalier then, right? It must have been an S Cavalier or a Ferrothorn, and they just know it's over. Either way, I will take it. GG. Another Swampert lead. Again, this is where I want to see the Swampert. So this is uh, this is fine with me. This got, this time I'm actually gonna get my Psycho cut through. So that is uh, that is nice. Already going better than the previous uh, previous match. I'm gonna th and throw another foul play here. Uh, or another, I'm gonna throw my first foul play here. Which actually gets a shield from a Swampert, which is interesting. I guess Malamar can technically learn Hyper Beam, which I have seen people run. And maybe they were scared of that, because that would do a lot of damage. That would do a lot of damage. They're gonna shield another move. At this point, there's no point in shielding. If I throw a move here, they are not gonna die. And they will get to another move before I can get to another move. So... Uh, either way, uh, I'm gonna have to throw a move with Talonflame or Nidoqueen onto this thing to kill it. So I decided to let my uh, Malamar go, go in Talonflame and just throw the Brave Bird right away before they can get to another Hydro Cannon. Now, at this point, I'm really hoping they're just really weak to Talonflame in the back. It is a wall rain, which is not too bad for, bad for Talonflame, but unfortunately, I already threw a Brave Bird. So I'm debuffed. Besides that, they throw the Icicle Spear immediately. At 5 Powder Snows, that means I should get an Incinerate through, but unfortunately, I don't get my Incinerate through, which put, puts me in an even worse position. I have to bring my Needle Queen into this Warren uh, at this point. I don't think that Miss Incinerate would have changed the game, by the way, because this is not... Uh, they would have outpaced me either way. And it's a, it's a Cresselia on the back, which... Uh, yeah, my Needle Queen just cannot beat. Unfortunately, the only way I win this is if I can get to a Poison Fang and then to a Nerf Power, but no, Cresselia is very, very spammy. Gets to the Garas, not there, or the Moonblast. Yeah, Moonblast. Take me out. And we'll be able to farm down my Talonflame. That is a GG. All right, Scrafty Elite. This is actually pretty pretty okay. Well, yeah, it's pretty okay. I actually have Talonflame and Needle Queen in the back, so two better answers to Scrafty. Uh, so I will just suit power once and then dip into my Talonflame. As you could see, that did a really nice chunk of damage to the Scrafty. So... Uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. They actually power punch my talent, so I'm very happy uh caught that. Because they're jealoused. Really bad uh, for Talon Flame, but this is actually really nice for me because now Nido Queen gets to avoid the Jellison. So that's nice. Uh because Nido Queen loses very hard to that thing. Harder than Talon Flame, actually. I throw another Brave Bird. They let it go. They die. In comes a uh, what is this thing? A Galvantula. I don't see that thing often. That's cool. Who's gonna be able to flame charge this and flame putting in so much work? And Galvantia just gets walled by Nido Queen. So this is looking pretty good at this point. Actually, the first bug type we saw today. I think basically. Oh, no, besides Escavalier. Yeah, Escavalier and Galvantia are probably the only bug types in, um, in the open Ultra League at the moment. Maybe the odd scissor. Uh, but yeah, Talon Flame, Nido Queen do really good against those. Except for Scissor, I guess. Scissor would be a really good core breaker for a Malamar Nido Queen, actually. Just like Escav, by the way. Escavalier, definitely a bit of an issue as well. 
but Malamar actually still has some play there because the counters don't do that much. And if you're shielded on Mega Horn, you'll be fine. Yeah, this, this matchup is so over. Because Galvantia just can't do anything versus Queen. And I'm just gonna poison a Fang this down, and it is a good game. If I really wanted to, I could probably finish this with Malamar as well. Switch it in now. Oh, oh, that's a missed opportunity. But all right, I'll take it, GG. All right, Talon Flame lead. This is a lead that Talon Flame definitely wins generally. Uh, but it's not too bad because I'm doing neutral damage. Just gonna let this, the first move go. I am tanky. Even if this is a Brave Bird, I can tank it. If it's a Flame Charge, it's even better. Uh, they do throw a Flame Charge. Fine, I'm gonna go throw a Foul Play here. There's still one away from the next Flame Charge. Uh, so I can throw two more side cuts, throw my foul play, so put them quite low if they let it go. And I don't think I want to spend any shields on my Molomar at this point. Because if I use a shield here, I will get another uh, foul play off. One of them, not two, only one. Uh, they would have to shield it, but they can also just farm me all the way down and get like four incinerates worth of energy, or three or four, and which would be quite devastating for my backline. So I just let it go, take the shield advantage. Uh, and at this point, a uh, Nidoqueen is looking pretty good. They bring in Cresselia, which is not great for Nidoqueen, but also not that bad. Uh, because the side cuts really don't do that much. Unfortunately, we CMP here. I would have liked to keep my Nidoqueen alive without having to use a shield. I throw a Grass Knot. At this point, I know it's, I think, five more for the next Grass Knot. So I'm going to try to catch it on my Talon Flame here, which I do catch. Hopefully, this is the Grass Knot. Oh, it should be. It can't be anything else, so... Uh, let's go, we call it the Grass Knot. In comes a Surfetch. This is uh, the fighter. I want to see if it's like the champ. This could be kind of troublesome because of Rock Slide, of course. But it is just a Surfetch. They do Night Slash right away, which I call. Want to no-shoot the first Night Slash, of course. Because, uh, well, if, if it boosts, then the second one is going to do much more. So, yeah, shoot it up. I thought they would have reached the Night Slash before my Incinerate there. Before my Flame Charge there. So, I didn't throw it yet. But for some reason, they they either they either over-farmed, or I just miscounted. But I'm pretty sure they just over-farmed for no reason there. So, I don't know what happened, but yeah, I'm still fine. I was over I able to over-farm by one, and we just got to the Brave Bird here, and it's a good game. GG's. Politoed lead. This is pretty even, and exactly where I want to see it, actually. Talonflame and Nidoqueen, of course, both don't want to see the Politoed in the lead. Just gonna start throwing off these foul plays. These are both extremely tanky Pokemon, so... They won't be doing much damage to each other. Just gonna no shield this. No reason to shield. And actually go for the Earthquake here. Which is interesting. I think double Weather Ball is like more energy efficient. But I guess two Earthquakes take me out. They would have needed like four Weather Balls probably. So kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. They're gonna go for a Weather Ball here though. Which I can definitely uh, still take. Uh, so I do take it. I will reach another Foul Play here. Before they would have reached a Weather Ball. But I don't fire. I, 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 I kind of want to say this was calculated, because now I can farm down with Nidoqueen, which is really nice. But no, I actually just miscounted. But it ends up working really nice, because I don't really want them to farm down my Malamar. Because at this point, my Malamar is pretty useless. So I get this energy on Nidoqueen, which is really nice. I bring in Wall Rain, which is really good for me too, because I can get off this Poison Fang. And uh, bring in my Talon Flame that then, but while they're debuffed, throw the Flame Charge. They catch it on their Obstagoon. Really nice play by my opponent, actually, because their Obstagoon is actually pretty useless right now. So the best use is to catch. And they get off a nice slash as well in the process. So good place by my opponent. Just gonna over farm at this point on Talon Flame, though. So they're likely just gonna sack Goon, if I was to guess. They can actually spend afford a shield here, too, I think. But that would not be too bad of a play because I can't really farm down at that point. But I do opt to go with uh, the wall rain sweep. Uh, let's see if it works out for them. Definitely going to be able to get to another flame charge right here. Make sure to press it immediately because if I would over farm more, they would definitely get to another icicle spear. Uh, they do shield this up at this point. Yes, I will shield it up. This is going to be just fast moves all the way at this point. And my incinerates do much more than my potion jabs do. So I'm just going to get off as much fast moves as I can. Throw this flame charge as well. Honestly, kind of unnecessary because they will shield this. But this will pressure them into throwing even more because these incinerates are doing a lot. I feel like they should have farmed a little less there. Because now they're already in the red. Because they hit, got hit by another incinerate and I can farm them down at this point. The thing is though, one Icicle Spear doesn't knock me out. So they needed a lot of energy. So it makes sense. If they would have farmed less, 
I would have just reached the Poison Fang and killed them either way. So, good try by my opponent there, but Talonflame Nuquin just too strong and it is a uh, game over. That was also the final battle. I hope you enjoyed the video. Malamar definitely did some good work today, but not really a Pokemon I would necessarily recommend, to be honest. I think there are definitely better options out there, but it is quite fun. So, uh, you know, if you, if you happen to have one, play around with it. See how it does. Anyway, see you guys in the next one, alright? Bye-bye.